And to me it is, uh, Tom, a little bit of a mystery because I used to enjoy being a Member of Parliament very much indeed. Uh, it could be stressful from time to time, but it was a great privilege. There was a lot of camaraderie. I was there in the era before social media. I think a lot of these people uh, are suffering from being trolled and uh, victimised online. Uh, some of the problems are not new that Members of Parliament experience. For instance, if your constituency is a very long way from London... And if you're driving, you know, five hours backwards and forwards and you've got children back in your constituency, these are problems. What do you think is going on? Before we get to the political side of it, what do you think the personal issues are for members of parliament? Well, I think it's an incredibly demanding job. The demands on the job have increased over time. There's uh, uh, in the way that members of parliament perhaps... 30, 40 years ago would, would go off and sort of um, think deeply about things, write books and, um, and perhaps spend less time doing casework. Today, there is that sort of social work element to the role in such a, a, a more profound way and also just so much more scrutiny on that role as well, with very limited support staff. Most members of parliament have three or four caseworkers or, or research assistants with them in parliament. I'm surprised, I'm surprised that you made that point because, I mean, compared with my day, they mm. have vastly more resources. And I know mm. members of parliament who've got up to six or seven. Yes. They, they get, what, heading towards £200,000 to support staff. They, they do, but compared to other countries around the world where legislators, legislators have uh, much bigger offices, uh, MPs... We'll, uh, we'll have a smaller uh, sort of group there to, to help them along. But, but I think there's something more profound in terms of just what's happened in the last two, three, four years. And that's that the role of being an MP has become a lot less enjoyable for many, many people because of the, 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 the political turmoil, but also just the sort of state of things in Westminster. There's constant rebellions, constant defenestrations, three prime ministers in three months. Um, we seem to be in a sort of state of flux that uh, looks more like things uh, sort of as they were written about in the 1970s than they, anything they, more. They've been unlucky, you and I agree on this, um, they've been unlucky that during Covid they were not there together, so there's very little camaraderie. Some of the changes that have been made supposedly to improve conditions have had unintended consequences. In my day, we all used to have dinner together. Mm. And so you could spot in the room. And also you had to sit uh, uh, wherever there was a space. So you got to know different members of parliament every evening when you were there. Uh, many of them complain about a lack of camaraderie today. Yes, and uh, let's not forget that when this new intake came in, and many, many of, the, of, of these MPs, not just those that won their seats, of course, but those that replaced others in, uh, in safer seats where MPs had stood down at the last election. It was a big sort of changeover uh, in the last election, over 100 new Conservative MPs. And they had about one month in Parliament before they had to go back to their constituencies and didn't get to know their colleagues, didn't get to be incubated into the system in the same way that would normally happen. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why party discipline has been much, much weaker over the last two and a half years than it might otherwise be. And, and that does really change the way in which Parliament works. Tom Harwood, on the ball as ever, absolutely. Thank you very much for coming on and talking about the plight of MPs. Uh,